Section 5.3, Law of Sines. So, so far we've only solved right triangles. Um, right, right triangles have that nice right angle. So what are we going to do for other triangles? And that's where the law of sines comes into play. It's going to allow us to solve triangles that don't have right angles. That's called an oblique triangle. It has either three acute angles, so that would be just all smaller, something like that, or two acute angles and one obtuse. So as soon as you have one obtuse, the other two are smaller. Obtuse, remember, is bigger than 90 degrees. So I'm going to define area of these triangles, and that's going to lead us into law of sines. So we may remember that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. The tricky part with the non-right triangles is figuring out what that height is. So let's say we have the triangle A, B, and C, and then capital A will be the angle opposite A, capital C opposite C, and then capital B opposite B. That's how we'll define triangles for this section. So if we make a height, there's kind of three options for height. If side A is my base, then the height will be right here, right? It's perpendicular. If side C is my base, the height will be here, perpendicular. And if side B is my base, I get a different height. So all of these will tell me the area. There's just different ways of finding the height. So let's figure out how to find the height, and then we will have this new formula, which will lead us to law of sines. So the height is unknown, but we can use um, sine to find the height because it makes a right angle. So if I look at this triangle right here, we may have to flip it to see it better. Oop, there we go. Right, so if we take sine of A or alpha, the book likes to use Greek letters, which is why I kept them, but I like the capital letters better. Um, height is opposite. C is the hypotenuse. So sine of A is equal to H1 over C. Oops, H1. So H1 is C times sine A. So then area of this triangle will be H1 times base, or B, 1 half H1 times base. I'm going to put the B in the front times C sine of A. So that's area of this triangle. The base times the height times 1 half. And it'll be similar for the remainder ones. So let's do something similar. So let's make a triangle. For this one, I'm picking the triangle that I know works best for formulas, so I'm going to pick this triangle just to convince you where the formula comes from. If you're doing this on paper, right, just kind of rotate your head, but if we rotate it, oops, that's the wrong one. So we can cut the triangle. I think just turning it sideways makes it easier to see. So there's our right angle. So if we did sine of B, opposite would be H2, hypotenuse would be A. So sine of B, or beta, that's beta. The book likes Greek letters, but I, most books don't use Greek letters, so I'm going to stick with capital. But I'm showing you both, so you can reference the book. H2 over A. So H2 will be A times sine B. And we'll do the same thing. Area is 1 half base, my base will be C in this triangle, times A sine B for height. All right, so we can imagine the last one's going to be pretty similar. It's actually the easiest because of the, it's already like right side up for us. So we are going to say, um, we'll do C this time, sine of C will be H3 for opposite over B. So H3 is B times sine C. And so then area, let's get rid of that B because that's a little confusing. Base is A here. Area is 1 half base. Base is A times height, B sine C. And those are how you find areas of non 
right triangles. Um, but the reason we care about this is this is going to lead us into the law of sines. So this will be useful if you ever need to find area, um, but we are going to focus on law of sines, which is derived from the area. So the law of sines can allows us to solve any triangle, any non-right triangle, any oblique triangle. So we'll have an oblique triangle with sides A. The angle opposite A will be A or alpha. So the book likes alpha, just to get you comfortable with the book, but capital letters are more common. Side B is opposite angle B, so side B is right here. So the angle is the one opposite that side, or we can use beta if we want Greek letters. And then the final side is side C. So side C is opposite angle C, and then sometimes we use gamma, kind of like a upside down fish or something. So when we will use the law of sines, it depends on what information we know. And we'll see this as we go through the chapter. Um, if we know one side of the triangle and two angles, we abbreviate this as side angle angle, SAA, or angle side angle. I'll talk about that as we go through examples. Um, we can also use this if we know two sides and we know the angle opposite. So that's side side angle, SSA. Don't worry, I'll go over those abbreviations and examples. And the law of sines, put a star next to it, right? This is the name of the entire section, so obviously this is important. The law of sines tells us that if we have angles A, B, and C, opposite of the side lengths A, B, and C, little A, B, and C, as shown above, then we get this nice ratio that allows us to solve the triangle. Sine A over A, sine B over B equals sine C over C. If you look in the book, they use alpha, but and beta, so sine alpha over A equals sine beta over B equals sine gamma over C. But I have a feeling most of us will prefer capital letters. Um, it's also true that you can flip it. So A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. So let's just derive it and then we'll do examples in the next videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the areas equal to each other. So go back and look at the previous page and I'm gonna copy those area formulas down. So my first one was one half BC sine of A. Um, these were all finding area for the same triangle, right? It was just depending on which side we looked at the base. So the area is the same. So if the second one was one half AC times sine B and the third one was one half AB sine of C. So these were all the area of the same triangle just depending on which side we looked at the base. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide these all by one half to get rid of the one half. All right, it's so basically a three-sided equation. And then I'm also gonna divide them by A, B, C. As long as I'm doing it to all three, it's allowed. And let's see what we're left with. So the first one I get sine A over A. Second one I get sine B over B. And the last one I get sine C over C. So we just proved it. So they're just derived from the area formulas.